Joining us now, we have Julian Assange's brother, Gabriel Shipton, here to give us an update. Great to see you, Gabriel. Good to see you, Gabriel. Yes, yeah, good to be here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I know this is an extraordinarily difficult week for you and your family. Could you just bring us up to speed with what is happening this week in the courtroom? And in particular, there's a question of why Julian wasn't present himself for the proceedings. Could you clear that piece up for us, too? Sure. So uh, in, Janu in January this year, Julian won his um, extradition hearing. The, the magistrate rejected the extradition uh, requested by the U.S. prosecutors. Uh, U.S. prosecution uh, immediately appealed. Um, this was still uh, during the Trump period. And uh, now we have the appeal hearing, which is two days, uh, 27th, 28th. Um, the appeal hearing is based on, uh, you know, some assurances that have been given um, by the U.S. prosecutors that Julian won't be held under SAMS uh, or go to ADX Florence. Uh, Colorado prison, and that he'll be able to serve his sentence in uh, Australia once he's convicted. But uh, all these assurances have uh, caveats to them. Uh, you know, at any time, if uh, if Julian's seen as a uh, you know communicating national security uh, secrets or any any sort of risk like that, he can put be put straight into SAMS or, or moved to prisons uh, instantly, and serving his time in Australia will only come once he has gone through the entire court process. So potentially two years more of the extradition proceedings in the UK, and then up to 10 years, uh, you know, all the way to the Supreme Court in the US. Uh, so he could be potentially be 62 by the time he's serving uh, his sentence back in Australia. Wow. And so with yeah. the developments here, that he could be up to 62, Gabriel, what are the different avenues on which this might end? Do you have any hope, in other words, outside of the U.S. government dropping this case? Well, uh, I guess that that is the simplest, easiest way. Is that if the Biden administration just just lets this go. Um, other than that, you know, it's this extradition battle that just keeps going and going. And and Julian, he's in his third year of prison. Uh, you know. I saw him over the court video yesterday for the first time in, in almost a year. I, I last saw him in October uh, 2020, just before the uh, prison went into a COVID lockdown. And, you know, look, I, I was shocked. Like, it looked like he'd, he'd aged like five years. Uh, you know, I was just taken aback at, at, the, at his appearance uh, and his manner in that um in that small room that he was in at, at Belmarsh, uh, Belmarsh Prison. I think it's important for people to understand too, as you're laying out, the reason extradition was denied to start with was not because they rejected the US government's case writ large. They said that they were worried about Julian's mental health and that he would be at extreme risk of suicide. Um, so in light of that, you know, what uh, are you seeing in terms of his mental health and what are his attorneys arguing with regards to his mental health? Well, so uh, in this next, in this next, in this current appeal, there, uh, there there's some weighting of evidence, of psychiatric evidence that, that the U.S. prosecutors have, um, you know, are appealing the weighting given to, to, the, to it by the judge. Um, but I think... You know, it's, the thing is, this case is is just last week there was a, a coalition of 25 press freedom organisations, you know, made up of the ACLU, Amnesty International, uh, Human Rights Watch, uh, Freedom of the Press Foundation, who all called on this case to be dropped, called, you know, sent a letter to Merrick Garland and said, this is, you know, a massive threat to press freedom. So it's, it's sort of just bizarre that 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 this case is still going on in a court in in the UK, and we're talking about you know Julian's mental health, and we're talking about uh, you know prison conditions in the US. So uh, you know I think it's just really really bizarre that you know everybody knows this case is a huge press to, a huge threat to press freedom, uh, but it continues on. So you know the only thing that we can sort of conclude is that it's a it's a punishment uh, by process to Julian. You know he's he's on remand, he's 
innocent. He hasn't been convicted of anything. Uh, and he's been in jail now for coming up to three years. Have you had any interactions directly with the Biden administration? Have they said anything um, that has either given you hope or been discouraging? I think, you know, what, what's very interesting about the Biden administration is what they haven't been saying. They haven't been supporting this case at all. Uh, they are sort of, you know, every time they're asked about it, it gets deflected to the uh, DOJ. So, you know, uh, the line is, you know, we... Un under this administration, the DOJ is independent and makes their own independent decisions. You know, uh, Blinken was asked about it in Paris. Uh, he deflected to the DOJ. Jen Psaki has been asked multiple times about this case and uh, it gets deflected, which is a very big change of position. Under the Trump administration, you know, you had people like Mike Pompeo when he was head of the CIA uh, coming out and saying, uh, you know, a war on WikiLeaks, uh, declaring uh, WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence agency, uh, which allowed them to sort of treat WikiLeaks as, say, uh, they would the Iranian intelligence agency or the Russian intelligence agency. Uh, you know, they were able to uh, make plans and, and put together um, plans, you know, without congressional oversight uh, to, you know, I, I assume you've seen the Yahoo News story where uh, those plans you know, came out over 30 uh, right. sources confirming oh, plans yes. from within the CIA uh, to uh, kidnap Julian, uh, to murder Julian. Um, I think, you know, what we've seen with this case now is, is you know, those plans, they, they still exist, but they're sort of being put in place, uh, you know, through this veil of legality in a, in a judicial way. You know, Julian was taken from his refuge in the uh, Ecuadorian embassy um, which was exactly what the CIA had planned to do. They wanted to kidnap him, but now they've done it. They've managed to do it judicially. Mm, I think mm. that's really well said. I know, Gabriel, that you and your father have also been working on a film um, tracking your struggle to free Julian. Let's take a look at a little bit of that. Can we talk about your contact with Julian through his childhood? It's part of the story, I think. It isn't important. part of the story. Yeah. The story is that, I, you know, I'm attempting in my own modest way yeah. to get Julian out of the ship. Julian Assange is the hero of our time. He was the darling of the left. All of a sudden, he's a puppet of Russia. My name is John Shifton. I'm Julian Assange's yeah, father. WikiLeaks found that Julian Assange has been arrested. One of the most notorious and controversial figures in custody. Assange will remain behind bars until that extradition hearing, which has been set down for the end of February. I urge the Department of Justice to drop the charges. The maximum jail sentence of 175 years. Because he published the truth. How does it feel to be the father of such a controversial figure, somebody who's known around the world? Was that him on the phone before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you talking about on a, on a kind of regular basis? If Julian is extradited to the United States to face these charges, he will be the first, but not the last. What are your worst fears? That it just collapses under the strain. It looks as though what journalists do for a living is seen to be a criminal act. So tell us a little bit more about the film and then also, Gabriel, if you would, for people who um, care about this case, which frankly I think everyone should, everyone who cares about press freedom, but also who has compassion for the pain that your family has suffered here, what do you want them to do today? Um, so the, uh, the film's premiering next week at uh, the Sydney Film Festival in Australia. Um, you know, I think... <laughs> It's the we're trying to tell the personal side, the, the story behind the headlines. You know, everybody knows Julian, uh, you know, how they read about him in the newspapers or, or, or through, you know, through that lens. So we're just trying to uh, tell a human side to the story that, that really hasn't been told before. Um, what I usually uh, get people to do, you know, I, I think and has been quite successful is uh, contact their representatives, uh, you know, put together localised petitions, uh, district petitions, uh, get people together, sign on that, you know, 
to take to your Congress people that you care about this case, you care about the repercussions for press freedoms and the First Amendment that this case poses. Um, direct action is always, uh, you know, always good. Uh, you can go to assangedefence.org. There are protests happening uh, across the United States all the time. Um, and, you know, there's nothing like direct action, getting out on the streets and, and, and you know, letting your voice be heard. Yeah, well, we will have links down there in the description on the film. Um, Crystal and I, you know, wish the best and we hope encourage people to get um, involved here. So thank you, Gabriel. We really appreciate you joining us. We'll be watching Thanks, closely, brother. Gabriel. Thank you so much. We're so grateful. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We have some big announcements um, coming here from the studio on Monday. I'm really excited to debut some of the stuff that we have been working on. We are ramping things up to the next level. A special thank you to all of the lifetime members, monthly, yearly, all of those who made this possible. And if you can help us continue it even more so that we can continue to ramp everything up here. Um, we have some really awesome developments I can't wait to share. There's a link down there in the description to become a premium member. Thank you guys for the ones who are already there. And if you can help support us, it makes it so that this business is possible so we can continue to bring you the best show possible. Segments like Gabe Shipton or many of the other stuff that we covered here on the show, you're never going to see that once on corporate media. Guys, we love you. We're so grateful for you. We're going to have some content for you over the weekend too, including our um, continued partnership with Daily Poster. That's going to post tomorrow. It's going to post tomorrow. <laughs> um, so check that out. Let us know what you've been thinking about those right. segments. Um, they do such great work, original journalism. And so we want to support those outlets that are out there actually doing the work and telling the truth, <laughs> which is, you know, it's a low bar, but it's a really important one. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here with a full show on Monday. See you Monday. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.